everyone, and welcome to episode 402 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's show is called Throwing Darts with Jennifer, and it's going to cover a number of different topics surrounding type 1 diabetes. Please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box Podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan, becoming bold with insulin, or listening to a podcast where a grown woman tells you about the time her doctor threw a needle at her. Oh, that's right. Jennifer's got a number of good stories about growing up, living with, being married with, and trying to build a family with type 1 diabetes. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. The episode is also sponsored by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. You can find out more at contournext.com forward slash juice box. And please don't forget to check out t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box to see if the data they need from you is something you're willing to share. Because if it is, it's going to lead to great advancements for people with type 1 diabetes. Check them out. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. Hi, my name is Jennifer Rainey. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> do I need to introduce myself? Like what I do? or No, let's just thank the sponsors and end this thing. Perfect. Big thanks right, to Omnipod, thanks Omnipod and Dexcom. And and Dexcom. <laughs> I'm wearing both of those devices. So way to go, Omnipod and Dexcom, for keeping me alive. I appreciate it. Jennifer, do you happen to know what link they could use to check out the the product? Oh, it's like backslash juice box to get a free um, trial demo that you can wear right. that um, I'm just, it, right, it doesn't. Right, right, yeah, Jennifer. there's no insulin in it. You just try it out. See if you like it. Stuck to your body. You can go shower or jump in a pool. <laughs> All right, Jennifer, stop. Um, <laughs> I'm doing your job for you. No, no, no. I, I just, it was funny because you're like, is that it? And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's it. Jennifer was here. <laughs> she has diabetes and it's over. Uh, yeah, she's still alive. Should I start doing thing. three minute episodes where people are just like, hey, my name is Jennifer. I have type 1 diabetes and then it's yes. over? <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, uh, no, you don't have to tell me. I mean, I would assume everything's going to come out while we're talking. So sure. you don't have to, you know, if you tell everybody everything about yourself, there'd be really no reason to listen to the conversation. <laughs> yes. Be like, that Jennifer laid everything out in 30 seconds. That was done. Yep. Oh, and I'm a fast talker, too. So it, it really is everything out in 30 seconds. Oh, everyone's going to be thrilled. You and I <laughs> speed talking through this episode. Uh, yes. That's okay. Uh, let's let's start here. You're single, married. I am you? married. I am married. We've been married for, ooh, I'm bad at dates. He's great at dates. Um, since 2011. What? Did, wait, no, sorry, 2013. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wait, hold on. Two, uh, six, 12, 16. There you go. Since whenever that was. So everybody's like, you know, understands now that anything you may say is, you know, it's, <laughs> it's about right. Yes, yes. I'm sure your husband's going to be thrilled later to find out that you missed your wedding year by two years. That's fascinating. It, yes. <laughs> what What happened in 2013 that made you think of that? Uh, that's when I had my son. Okay. All right. So you got married in 2011. 2016. Sorry. Wait, 16? Start over again. I know. Your name's know, Jennifer, right? My name is Jennifer. Real quickly, I am, you definitely have diabetes? I I do have diabetes. Okay. I have had that for 27 years. I know that. Oh, that you know. All right. Yes. All right. 27 years. Watch this. It's 2020. You got diagnosed in 1993. I did. Boom. Right before my sixth birthday? Yes. Congratulations. Six years old, 27. Let's think about that. That's just needles, right? Little needles and a vial of insulin? Oh, big needles and a two vials of insulin, regular and lente. Oh, you were doing that. 
I was doing that. It was and and ninety carb meals, force force fed ninety carb meals. Wait, ninety carbs in a six year old? Um, it started at forty five, but then it went up to ninety because I wasn't growing. Ah, did you ever grow? Or are you like four feet tall still? <laughs> I'm still little. <laughs> no, I've grown to a normal ish human size. I think so. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Not, not, was that hard to eat that much food when you were little? Do you remember? I do. I It was very hard. Um, and so a lot of it ended up just being like juice boxes and things like that to get my carbs up and to get fruit in um, because it was basically like, here, eat this pasta, the cereal, and just chug the rest in juice. Pasta, cereal, and juice. Yeah. <laughs> what part of the country did you grow up in? Uh, Texas. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> I'm not saying I know anything. I'm, I, I really am not. <laughs> We had a lot of, you know, actually, we had a lot of oatmeal growing up and grits and um, cream of wheat, things like that, that were very carb heavy to make sure I got my carbs in. (laughs) Do you have any feeling for what your A1C was back then? Oh, goodness. It was it was never below 10 until I was probably uh, 12 or 13. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Not with not with that old timey insulin and a bucket of oats. Right, right. And even the testers were old timey. It took 55 seconds, I think, on my first tester, uh, my first glucometer to read my blood sugar. Yeah. Well, you know all the numbers except when you got married. That's pretty interesting. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I have reminders in my calendar. It gives me a two week reminder and then a two day reminder. That's my like Amazon reminder so I can order something really quickly. If you didn't do that, strong possibility (laughs) your anniversary would just roll by and you wouldn't notice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like 100% possibility. But you like the guy? Oh, I love him. Oh, he's the best. Okay. He's the best human I've ever met. I, I just, I'm saying, I think it's like the, every once in a while on my anniversary, I'll bring something to my wife and she'll be like, hey, I forgot to get a card. And I, <laughs> and I feel like that means, hey, I forgot it was our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is, is I don't forget to love him. So I, I, I might forget the dates, but I, I, I try really hard to love them. <laughs> wow, that's lovely. Good for you. All right. All right I want to go back in time again to yes. these two old insulins and you basically <laughs> being fed like a turkey. We're trying to get ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like we're the funneling food into me. Yeah. What? What is it? Was that a Bugs Bunny? You're too young. Are you too young to remember? There was a turkey and they had to fatten it up. Was it Daffy Duck? Right. I vaguely remember it. You, hear, you know what Maybe I'm saying? Maybe it's like reruns. Yes. All right. I'm gonna that we'll figure out later because that doesn't feel important to your story, but <laughs> it did just pop into my mind. Uh you don't think that your A1C was under 10 for the first six years that you had diabetes. Do you know what changed and how it started to come down? Um, technology, better insulins. Um, I finally started seeing a pediatric endocrinologist. Um, were you seeing a vet me. before? What what was happening before? I, I was seeing, he was ancient. Um, he was actually very traumatizing. I, I have needle phobia because this first doctor I saw literally threw a needle at me from a syringe at me from across the room because he wanted to show me that it's not scary. And I was wearing, <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing shorts that day. And so it just kind of stuck into my thigh and flopped around for a little bit as he's talking. You have to say, wait, holy Christ. <laughs> wait a second. When you were six years old. A man threw a syringe at you like a dart to yes, say to absolutely. you, look, this isn't scary? Absolutely. And I've looked him up. He's still alive. He's still alive. He's not practicing anymore, but he is still alive. He's a hell of a dart player, though. I a syringe at him. <laughs> well, I mean, he's probably just in a bar hustling darts, don't you think? <laughs> I, I don't know if he's hustling anymore. He's like probably 90. Wow, that's insane. It was very traumatizing. My dad was diabetic, um, and my grandpa was diabetic. So I... Uh, I just went to my dad's doctor because I didn't get ho- hospitalized then at all. Pediatric um, didn't go to a children's hospital, anything like that. They just said, "Oh, you're diabetic, and your family knows what to do." So, go to his doctor. Wow, that I I, I don't really know what to say about that exactly. I know <laughs> you're not misremembering that, or you didn't have a childhood trauma no. that you've replaced with this memory, or anything. that oh, really no, happened done- to you. I mean, it's definitely childhood trauma, but I've done the therapy to work through it. <laughs> did he do anything? I mean, what are the other things he did that were sketchy that you recall? I, you know, that's the only thing the that I remember. One. I just remember he was very grumpy and very not kind. Um, 
we did, we checked my blood sugar, goodness, all the time. My parents actually found an old log from when I was really young, um, when they were downsizing their house. And so I kept that just as a, oh my gosh, I stayed alive through that because I would have blood sugars that were like 27 and then the next one is 400 and the next one was 30. And they just, that, and that was, that seemed okay, right? Like, well, like, at least with this guy who thinks it's okay to chuck a needle at a kid. But sure, sure. It, there was no, like, you didn't go in there being told, like, wow, you're really doing a bad job at this. No, no, he was not, he was not a very uh, kind endocrinologist. He mm-hmm. told me I would never have kids. Um, and that more than likely most diabetics die by the time they're 30 if they're diagnosed as young as me. Wow. He was treating so, you. He was treating you was like a bad. like a dog he found on the side of the street that he didn't love, but didn't. He just like oh, I'll feed it and leave it. Yeah, just let it roam in the yard. It, she'll die anyway. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> die. Doesn't really matter. Yep. Oh wow, that's it's, terrible. I'm so they sorry. They didn't take me out to pasture, so so that's good. I'm really very sorry. That's not that's not anything that should happen to anybody. <laughs> Did you have that growing up, that feeling like my life is fine, very finite and I'm not going to make it as long as other people? Or, or was your father was alive? So that must have given you some hope. Uh, um, I did have that. So my I, I definitely struggled with that for, um, gosh, my teenage years, probably. My dad passed away, actually, when I was 13. Um, and my grandpa passed away when I was younger, uh, both from diabetic complications. So it was a glaring, obvious signal in front of me that, life could end because of diabetes at, at any moment. Um, both of them had serious complications. What this doctor said to you then, it felt like it was, it was actually happening to the people around you. Absolutely. I mean, yes. how, how, do you know how old your father was when he passed? Uh, he was 49, and my grandfather was um, not far away from that either. Wow. Did you, now going into your teen years, did you live like, you weren't going to make it. <laughs> I, I definitely was wild and reckless in all of the bad ways. Um, because w- why did it matter? Can you tell me how wild are you afraid one day your children will grow up and hear this? What? what, what oh no! <laughs> like were you doing um, heroin while you were driving 120 miles an hour, or like what was it exactly? <laughs> uh, not quite heroin. So I, I was maybe a, a little, <laughs> a little less wild than that. But okay. definitely drinking and and. I uh, I don't know if I drink and drive, but I definitely drunk my drunk myself senseless quite a few times. Just because it felt like why? I mean, I guess why not, right? I don't why know. not? I mean, it's I don't care if my liver goes out because my pancreas is always already tapped anyway. I'll be dead anyway. It won't matter. Well, you have <laughs> yeah. an upbeat story, don't you, Jennifer? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it's hard. To, by the way, I've been googling Daffy Duck and turkeys, and I have no definitive answer, so we're gonna skip it. And keep oh moving. no! <laughs> there was an animal that was that was funnel fed. Right? Which also seems mean, but not as mean as what happened to you. (laughs) (laughs) Now, getting through high school and becoming, you know, like a young adult, did you go to college or what did you do after high school? Yes. So um, in high school, actually, was um, I started seeing a uh, pediatric endocrinologist, maybe like 12, 13, 14, and um, finally got an insulin pump. So that was kind of life changing for me. Um, I had like what was it? The original mini med med Tron. I think it was just mini med back then mm-hmm. that had like a swinging door on it. Um, a hinge door that you put the insulin inside. Like, like an <laughs> and, old like was, cassette player kind of a feeling. Yes. Yes. Very similar. And it, I played soccer. Um, so if you, if you ran with it, sometimes this hinge door would fly open and then the, um, the insulin would go flying out too. It was very interesting. <laughs> Oh, Technology has come a long way. Your life was such a shit show, but it's better now. <laughs> so that's good. But it was like, it, it was a fun, like, it was fun and wild. And I feel like my life is so boring now because it just doesn't have all of these wild adventures. Do you wish your Omnipod would just flip open and like some of the circuit <laughs> board would come flying out or something like that? Just be like, oh, yeah. I remember this, the good old days. <laughs> Yes, like if the batteries just shot out or something every now and then, that would be kind of nice. Well, listen, we're not near each other, but when the travel bans and all get lifted, I have plenty. I could come throw some syringes at you if you think it would <laughs> no. bring back good feelings. No, 
you know, I'm, I'm good without that. Actually, I, I think I still struggle with needle phobia. Um, I don't know what the technical term is for that, but I definitely appreciate Omnipod that it, it just shoots in with the click of a button. I, I, uh, loop, so it's on my phone. Um, but it's so nice to not have to do it myself. I just s- stick it on there and then I'm committed. Well, I agree, but this was not about Omnipod. This was just about me joking <laughs> about the thing coming open and anything. Uh, sure, sure. What, what'd so you teenage go to- years, got a pump, Yeah. went to college. Um, I, I took better care of myself. I had A1Cs typically in the seven, eight, nines. We'd get grabbed out if it was an eight, nine, and then bring it back down to a seven again. Um, uh, and then went to college, did, did all right got chewed out by my adult endocrinologist because I always complained about the price of insulin. And he said, well, you have purple and pink hair. So I think you're spending quite a bit of money on that too. <laughs> that, that You said, wow, insulin's expensive. And he said, what about this hair dye situation and all the money yes. you're sinking into it? Yes. <laughs> Did you say, hey, my hair might be purple and pink, but there's a really good reason for that. I grew up with an endocrinologist telling me I was going to drop dead. Then my dad and my grandfather dropped dead. Then the guy threw needles at me. And then my pump flew open and my stuff ran across the soccer field. So you're lucky all I did was dye my hair. Uh, Right. (laughs) I'm like, I get my blood sugar in five seconds now. I've shaved 50 seconds off of that just by staying alive. (laughs) Wow. All right. Okay. Listen, Uh, when did your life become decent? (laughs) When did you know? Uh, now it's just, I invite the crazy in. So instead of my life being crazy, I invite the crazy in. Mm -hmm. Um, I, let me see. I got married to a not so kind person, had a kid, got a divorce. And then, um, a few years back, I met my husband uh, and our life is pretty boring now. That's good. Boring's good. Boring's good. It's predictable. It's easy for di- diabetes for yeah, sure. It's easy to keep your blood sugar when you know you when you know dinners at six thirty every night. It's it's very much easier to handle yourself. Um, Absolutely, the, and he cooks and he, everything for me. Does he really? He really does, and he's a phenomenal chef. And he leaves the carb counts out on the counter if he's using like a new product or a, um, a, a pasta or something like that. That's lovely. Now, do you <laughs> two nice. you two don't have children together? Is that right? We do not. We are foster parents. So um, we have my biological son, his stepson, um, but he's been in his life since he was nine, ten months old. Okay. And then um, we foster um, different kiddos. We've been doing that for about a year and a half, almost two years now. Right. Now, is this when we tell people we've met each other? Sure. Okay. Yes. Jennifer, I met when I was in Dallas speaking. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And I, I, I very briefly met your foster uh, son. How's he yes. doing? He is about to go home actually this week. Really? Yes. He has uh, done big, huge changes. A1C was like above 14 and is now, I believe, right at 6.9 to 7. Oh, that's excellent. He's wearing a Dexcom now, which is super cool. He was anti anything that looked like he could have, you know, diabetes. And now he's wearing Dexcom and, and, proud of it and taking selfies with the shirt off with the Dexcom showing. Good for him. When we met that day, how long had he been with you? Three days. That was a really bad decision on my part. Bringing him to that event. Yeah, he looked yes. very unhappy, in case you're yes, wondering. he was very, very, very unhappy with me. Yeah. I, she's like, hi, this is an I'm start talking on. This kid doesn't care at all about having no. this conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's come a long way and, and has met some diabetic friends now, too. And just living with somebody else, I think, has helped him see see how to better care for himself. How long was he with you and or will he have been with you? Um, Almost three months. And so was he with you because of his his A1C and his care? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, he was um, not being super honest with his taking care of his medicine or, or just not taking insulin and saying that he was. Um, and it resulted in uh, four DKAs in six months. Hmm. And now does he go back to his parents? Yes, yes. And, and do- I work with them and talk with them often. And um, we're part of their support system. And we just got him like an Apple Watch so that he can see his Dexcom on his phone or on his watch and um they follow his dexcom from home and then we follow it and they we've been asked to continue to follow it just to 
to help with that accountability. Well, you're a lovely person. That's really hey, that's really nice. Maybe throwing needles at people makes them nice. <laughs> I try. I try to like you know take all the bad crap and then turn it into like I'm just going to be nice for people. Well, that's really amazing. I mean, honestly, to take the time and the effort, and I'm, I'm assuming the cost to just take a person you don't know and change their life like that. It's that's really wonderful. That's a, a gift that you know he'll keep forever, and you know won't be running around with incredibly high one C's and I, not. By the way, he's not the first kid that I've met at one of those events where, you know, DKA seems to be the level of care. You, you right. Know, just ignore, ignore, ignore DKA, go to the hospital, start over again. Uh, you know, by the fifth time I heard that story from people, I thought, wow, I'm not going to stop hearing those stories when I come to these things. You know, you know like this right. is really what happens to, to a lot of folks. So, yeah. And, you know, I, I've told him and I've shared my story with his parents and with others and different support groups that I was not far away from that as a teen. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an insulin pump, so it gave me background insulin and I would eat a honey bun. Actually, my, le- my lunch was typically like a package of Reese's and maybe some chips or something like that. Hmm. And I would sometimes take medicine for it and sometimes not. So it's just kind of what it was. Or I would remember, you know, two hours later, oh, I should have taken medicine for that and just give myself a unit or two to see what happens. What do you think causes that? Is it just expectation that this is what it is? Like, uh, I think it's a lot of it, it's it, it's a defiance. Obviously, you're a teen and it, it seems to typically happen in that like 15 to 25 year range. Um, I think it's feeling that invincibility also that teens typically have. Um, and then also the awkwardness of not wanting to stand out, not wanting to be different. So you just kind of hide it and then burn out and distress and parents jumping all over you. I was just talking with a parent, um, yesterday, actually, I'm going to talk with his daughter this afternoon. Um, but just when it going in from a, a, a place where we're not judging, um, you know, if you didn't test your blood sugar in a month, okay, how about we just test it once today and maybe once tomorrow, but it's just trying to start something little, a just noticeable difference instead of, you know, chewing somebody out because they haven't just checked their blood sugar in a month. Do you think that people get that way because it gets to that point because that's how it starts and then it becomes normal? Do you feel like a person in that scenario if you were with them back at the very beginning, wouldn't have the same feelings about testing? Or do you think they, like, what's your opinion about that? Is it, is it a learned behavior or is it um, something that's just going to happen to some people? I think it like waxes and wanes. I think even now as an adult, I'm 33 and I still go through phases of diabetes distress and frustration and not wanting to do anything. Um, I just have a little bit more, I don't know, grit in the game now and, and want to stay alive for as long as possible where I really didn't care when I was 15 or 20. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. It's nice to hear somebody say, I have a reason to be alive. I mean, <laughs> yeah. honestly, it's just, you know, that's in the end, that's really sort of what we're all doing. You know, I mean, if yeah. you didn't have a reason to be alive, they're, you know, working sucks. And I mean, the coronavirus has taught us all that. Now that we're home, Oof, you know, aside yeah. of the money, you're just like, wow way better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, my dad, I mean, I hate to say it, but he was a great example of what not to do. He didn't care for himself when he was younger and had horrible complications when he was older. He had his, he was blind, legally blind in his thirties, had a leg amputated, was about to have another one. Um, was I on dia- dialysis? All of those things that are, you know, scary and threats that other diabetics don't like to hear. And I'm like, yeah, that's, I think it's real life. And to me, it's not, um, it's not a horrible threat. I think it's a very real possibility and it's a great example for me of what not to do. And his father was in a similar situation. Um, the other one was my, my mom's father. Oh, your mother's father had type one. Your father had, type one. you were definitely getting diabetes. Yes. That's what they said. I had like the double whammy. Yeah. Oh, I see. So So I have a, um, a brother that's also type one and I had a sister who had gestational and then another brother who has type two. So everybody's getting diabetes. There's everybody no, up yeah. in here, yeah. It's like a family tradition. Yeah, it's it's fun actually. Really like, test your blood sugars or screenshot really bad things and bad blood sugars and high blood sugars and send them to each other. I was going to say, do you and your siblings? 
uh, have some sort of a support system together around diabetes? Not really. I think I have a better support system with my um, friends and that I've met with diabetics or that are diabetics. Um, but uh, I do wish I had, you know, more from my family members. My sister is a nurse, though, so that's really helpful. She has kind of saved me and broken into my apartment when I was younger and took me to the hospital um, a couple of times. <laughs> um, so she just gets it. She knows it. Your life is a um, movie. <laughs> I, you know, she thought I was drunk, um, but I wasn't drunk. I was just low blood sugar. I'd, I'd been asleep for like, I don't know, 20 hours. And she thought I was just drunk and was ignoring her. So she came over and really, I was just low and belligerent. So no kidding. It well, was fun but it was and embarrassing. Fun. It was fun and embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, I sounded like a drunk. That's the thing is, like, I was yelling and like saying very inappropriate comments, and she was like, "All right, you are not going to drink this juice, so we're going to go to the hospital." And they gave me some glucose through an IV, and I was better and completely embarrassed. Okay, did you like? Did you like say things like the Cowboys don't suck? Because that's a thing a person who's not making sense would say. I would never say that. You would never say that. <laughs> even, even drunk and delirious. I would never say that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, the reason you're on the show is yeah. not any of that, but how do we ignore all of that? I can't just bring you on and be like, hey, there's a topic here because sure. then we wouldn't have found out how absolutely crazy your life is. It's, it's <laughs> sure, wonderful sure. of you to share. Um, yes. okay. So you, I think originally reached out after hearing Samantha's, she's having a baby episodes. Yes. yes. Okay. So and I heard her first one where she talked about, um, her, I guess it was a miscarriage and then diagnosis all in the same time. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, Hey, I've had problems like that too. I'd be willing to share. Uh, yes. I was like, great. I get the most upbeat notes here at the, <laughs> at the podcast headquarters, which by the way is a desk where I, microphone. <laughs> sure, sure. yeah. Uh, but so you've obviously had a child with your, yes. with your, in your first marriage and yes. um, that went okay. Yes. Well, we're alive. So that's uh, okay to me. <laughs> I had um, what was called HELP syndrome. So um, through the whole pregnancy, my A1C was, it was rocking. I was under six um, the entire time, like 5.4, 5.5, 5.7 most of the time. Um, found out I was pregnant unexpectedly and um, kind of just stuck to it on, on management and control. And that was doing excellent Um I had my baby shower and then the next day, I was 34 weeks, and the next day I passed out at work. Well, if you didn't see an ad coming when someone said they were really pregnant and passed out at work, you haven't been listening to this podcast for very long. I love a cliffhanger. Here's something you won't have to wonder about. If I go to contournext.com forward slash juice box, am I getting a gold standard in the industry for blood glucose meters? And the answer there is simply yes. The Contour Next One blood glucose meter is simply the best, most accurate, and easy to use blood glucose meter that I've ever used for my daughter. And it's much simpler for her to carry and use than anything else she's ever tried. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. There's a lot going on there. You may be eligible for a free meter. You have to check to see. Uh, there's test strip program that could help you get more affordable test strips. There's links to their apps that link to the meter for Android and iPhone. There's everything that you need. And I find this to be a simple thing to do because we get blood glucose meters a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, and we just get used to them. But the truth is, you don't have to live with your old janky meter that may or may not be accurate. It doesn't have to be like that. Because the Contour Next One is next level accurate. And it's very inexpensive. As a matter of fact, it could be cheaper to buy cash than it would even be through your insurance. That's how inexpensive it is. But whether you get it through your insurance or out of pocket, what you want is an easy to use, brightly lit, easy to read meter that gives you great results. And by great, I mean accurate. 
And by results, I mean your blood sugar. And the Contour Next one will even allow second chance testing, meaning if you go in with a test strip, get some blood but not enough, you can go back and get more without ruining the test strip. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. I just need to tell you one last thing. Gvoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages two and above. Not only is Gvoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvokeglucagon.com slash risk. Last thing, don't forget to check out t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. There are links in the show notes of your podcast player and at juiceboxpodcast.com if I haven't said them so many times that they're stuck in your head. All right, back to Jennifer's story. Remember, she's 34 weeks pregnant, she's at work, and she just passed out. Which was a little strange. Um, And then I started getting really queasy, and when I came to, I was not feeling so well. So my boss actually called my mom to come pick me up because she was my emergency contact. Um, and I ended up in the hospital on a Monday and then had my son that Thursday because I had what's called help syndrome. So, um, it's, a um, kind of in a severe, um, I had low platelets, elevated liver enzymes. Some of my body, my organs started to shut down. And basically it was all because the baby inside me needed to come out. And that was the only way to, to make it better. Help H E L L P syndrome. H E L P. Serious complication of high blood pressure during pregnancy. Elevated liver enzymes, low platelet count syndrome usually develops before the 37th week of pregnancy, but can occur shortly after delivery. Many women are diagnosed with preeclampsia beforehand. Symptoms include nausea, Headache, belly pain, swelling. Treatment usually requires the delivery of the baby. Hmm. Very yep, rare. That was it. Ooh. It, it was a fun, rare thing. Um, they didn't think I had it because um, I didn't have that um, high blood pressure. My blood pressure through my entire pregnancy was actually really, really low. Um, and so it was always like, what is it, 80s over 50s, 80s over 60s, sometimes 70s over 50s. Um, and so when... I went to the hospital. Uh, they didn't think I had it because my blood pressure then was like 100 over 70s and then got up to 120 over 80s. You you have to know that when you Google it, it comes up as very rare, 20,000 cases a year, which then made me Google type 1 diabetes, which is rare, saying fewer than 200,000 cases a year. Have, yes. Has anything ever good happened? Where the odds weren't in your favor, like you <laughs> in won my a, life? like a lottery, or did you ever win at bingo or anything? Not really winning. Um, I like to like say that like staying alive is like really good thing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. Do you have any other diseases that we haven't spoken about yet? Um, I do have PCOS, which is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. It kind of comes hand in hand sometimes with di- with diabetes. Well, that's common, at least. Good for you. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Although it's interesting, it says common more than two hundred thousand cases a year. How can common be more than two hundred thousand? And all right, never mind. And we we're just running around all over the place with little cystic ovaries. Oh, wait a minute! Polycystic <laughs> ovary syndrome is a hormonal disorder common among young women of reproductive age. Uh, may have infrequent or prolonged menstruation periods or excessive hormone levels. The ovaries may develop numerous small collections of fluid and fail to regularly release eggs. Does that have anything to do with the reason you're on the show or no? It, uh, it does not. So, um, well, well, maybe a little bit. Um, we tried um, for a while and just nothing was happening. Um, we right. decided to go see a doctor and s- see what we can figure out. Ah, so you, So you and your current husband, which doesn't, 
I, I, I don't like the way that sounds. It makes it feel like you had <laughs> 17 husbands. I'm like, like the guy you've landed husband. on today, Jennifer, <laughs> which is not what I'm saying. But you and your the husband. The one that stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was like, all right, whatever. She lets me cook and I enjoy it. So um, Yes, yes. But but how long ago did you and uh, your husband try to have a baby? Um, so we have been fostering for quite a while, and it's it's kind of been one of those things that we um, came into marriage knowing or discussing that having children was not going to be an option for us because I my first son I had so many complications and had mm-hmm. the help syndrome. Um, I ended up having to have de- um, uh, platelets and blood transfusions to stay alive and was in a coma for a little bit after my son was born. So that was just a really bad experience. Um, it was like all of the things that moms dream about. It's the opposite of those things. <laughs> you don't have a photo of you with a car carrier outside the front door when you got home or anything like that? No, no. no. I was super jaundiced and yellow and gross. So I actually hate all of our like f- first photos together because I look like a yellow blob. <laughs> and I, I, um, the first time I saw him, I, I it was um, FaceTime or, because uh, he was in NICU and I was in ICU How and long? they wouldn't let me leave. How old is he now? He is almost seven. He's six and he says six and three quarters. It's okay. very important age. It, oh, I, yeah, I've heard about that. <laughs> the three, the <laughs> because three quarters it's almost situation. Seven. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So, all right. So, but recently, did you did you try to have a baby, or did it just happen? Were you celebrating so we were, um, the Cowboys yeah, so we getting over doctor. seven wins or something, and then? <laughs> We went to the doctor um, to get some kind of clearances first because I didn't want to go into it um, completely blind. And Mm -hmm. I knew that I'm at higher risk for just basically everything because of diabetes. And um, and and so we went to the doctor first to – I apologize. I'm going to move to a different room so that I'm a little bit further away from the kiddos. No, that's fine. We went to the doctor first just to get some, um, I don't know, kind of clarity that – everything was going to be okay. And I'm not just immediately walking into a death sentence. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot went wrong. So the concern really has to be that your life could be in danger again, I imagine. Right. Yes. Yes. And my family takes it very, very seriously. Even when my husband and I started dating, that was like a first conversation for them was, are you comfortable not having a kid (laughs) of your own? Is that something that, that you can be okay with? And, and he knew that, you know, from the very beginning. Um, so we just wanted to make sure we were wise with that because obviously I wouldn't want to risk my life and and never get to see our existing son ever sure, again. Sure. So seriously, this is like a first date con. Like he came to the door and they're like, "Hi, you're here to pick up Jennifer." And they're like, "He's like, yes, I am." <laughs> it's like you know you can't get her pregnant, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Literally, uh, when they when they the day they first met him, that was a conversation. <laughs> Very we put him on the grill and he, he really stuck around. I was going to say, once that guy calls you back, you got to figure he likes me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. Just give me a ring and let's just get married. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Yeah. This guy's in. I uh, Definitely. <laughs> no. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I would do in a scenario like that if somebody was like, hi, it's nice <laughs> to meet you. You know, you can't get my daughter pregnant, right? And I was like, no, I wasn't planning on doing it today, sir. And she's like, no, 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 that's not what I mean. You, you know? <laughs> Yes. I just mean ever. Well, but then did your health just so kind of normalize and you're that you thought, well, maybe I'm a different person with diabetes than I was in the past and I'm going to go for this. But you had a great A1C during your pregnancy the first time. Yes, I did have a great A1C during my pregnancy. Um, Afterwards, you know, obviously a single mom trying to get life uh, together. My A1C maybe went up to like the sevens, like seven, four, seven, five, Mm -hmm. um, which is not horrible at all. But um, it was it was higher for me. And then, um, since my husband and I have had our, our sweet and normal, boring life, um, it's been in the sixes almost consistently, probably for, I don't know, the past five ish years. Um, and we've just between like 5.6 and six, um, for the past, for a long while. And I just figured I'm, more healthy than I've ever been. Um, I also work out consistently now, um, which I do it because it keeps my cholesterol low so I don't have to take cholesterol medicine. Um, and then, I don't know, we just kind of started talking about it. We had a little kiddo um, who was with us, um, who was just, uh, if we had the opportunity um, uh, to adopt him, we would have immediately. Mm-hmm. He's just a, 
a fun kiddo and it kind of made us th- start thinking of like, do we, do we want to do this? Do we want to change our course from fostering only and supporting reunification to, to adopting or do we want to give it a try ourselves? And we decided to give it a try ourselves because I didn't want to change our, our motive on fostering and supporting families. It, okay. So you were considering, even if we have a baby of our own, we're going to continue to do that. The fostering. Yes. Yes. It's been uh, something I wanted to do since I was a kid. Yeah. Well, I would imagine you would like to try to help some people who can't get help because it feels like yeah. you, you were probably a person who was not being helped very much. Right. Yeah, I, it was just, yeah, it was just a different life and had some wild and crazy that went on in my life. And, um, and I think if I can, I don't know, do something good, we have an extra room in our house. Why not fill it up with somebody who needs a safe place to live? That's wonderful. I have a question going backwards a little bit. Can yeah. you talk for a minute? We'll take a little detour. I'm really, you know, I'm not teasing out what happened to you on purpose. I'm just following the sure, conversation. Sure. But uh, what is it like to be a an adult with type one and taking care of children. Like, so, you know, there's plenty of times on here where people talk about what it's like to be the parent taking care of a child, but I never really ask an adult type one, where are the concessions that you make because I'm assuming time and and focus and energy, right? Like, how does it? Great question. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I like this one because I think it is something that nobody really talks about. Um, I think for me, um, I think I, I struggle sometimes with guilt, um, because my son who is an awesome kiddo has had to know like, Hey, mom needs a juice box. Or if I'm crying and I'm super low, or if I'm grumpy and I'm super low and I say my blood sugar is low, he knows to just like back off for a little bit. Cause mom's not her best self. Um, and I kind of hate that, that he has to know that. And like, that's, to me, that's embarrassing. And, and, um, it's something that he, has to deal with that nobody else I mean there's sure there are other kids with parents who are di- diabetics but um he doesn't get it because he doesn't have diabetes um he does have low blood sugars though so he does get the grumpiness gotcha. <laughs> and, and things like that well so, how do you get that like I know people get low when they have diabetes I'm obviously not saying that but is there a it's funny because you said it was about guilt and I thought I thought of what I see my wife go through sometimes, like for instance, when my kids want to do something with her, but she's working from home and she needs to get the work done, but I can see her feeling badly about not doing something with them. And I thought, yeah, uh, that's what popped in my head. Like there's a trade off between the amount of time you spend on your diabetes, like how much would you spend on it if you were single and by yourself? And how many times have you let yourself get a little too high or a little too low or not, you know, checked or whatever you needed to do because you were giving your time over to somebody else. Does that happen? Sure. Sure. Um, I would say I've gotten a lot better at that, at just pausing, um, pausing to take care of myself, um, and, and trying, I've worked really hard through therapy and through, um, just different groups that I've been a part of to, um, to just give myself that time and to not be, um, ashamed or embarrassed or, or to, you know, to not let it go and go out and not take care of it. Right. Um, but I do know that that means I'm taking time away from other people or even, you know, sitting down at a meal and we're all about to start eating. And then I'm like, Oh, I need a bolus real fast. Oh my gosh. Um, and it, it stops the conversation or something like that, or I'm not in the conversation or I'm not paying attention to the conversation because I'm counting up some carbs real fast. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, I don't think that, uh, I don't know. We probably need to talk to more people who are adults and, you know, have that time pull where there's so many different things yanking at them. And, you know, you're married, you have a son, you're fostering kids, you know, you're talking to that foster kid's family and trying to help them be better prepared for him. You have a job, you you know, that's uh, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I work in public health, too. So that's been crazy because I um, am a communicator in, in all of this coronavirus stuff. How can you tell me like high level? What is it you do? Sure. I'm a public information officer for our local health department for our county. So I send out uh, press releases every single day for um, the new cases, recoveries, deaths, anything pertinent to that. And um, and do used to do all of our social media, but I have a team now of, of, um, of some others that have been kind of rerouted to communications so that they can help and assist with some of our social media communications right now. Wow. That's cool. 
so this goes out to the public or do you communicate with other states and counties or how does that all work? All of the above. So um, it goes out to the public um, through social media. And then I also communicate with our media partners. So I'm kind of the PR media liaison. And then also um, with IGR, so intergovernmental relations, talking to our local cities and towns that are within our county, um, just to communicate with them about what's going on, about any risks associated with their communities, and um, and make sure they're in the loop too, because they don't you don't want to surprise a, yeah. a mayor. <laughs> How do you ha- so do you get do you also get incoming information from your counterparts in other places? Yes, yes. So a lot of times I'll get kind of information on the down low. Hey, we're about to make this change, um, or we're about to make this. You know, now that we're all at stay at home orders and things like that, we're about to do this. What do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I I, I would guess especially in this moment, you can't have somebody on one side of a line on a map say. We're not going to let people, I don't know, drive after 10 p.m. And then, you know, you say, well, we're not doing that because, you know, we're, you know, one place can't close a bar and another place doesn't because I'll just drive to the place that doesn't. You kind of have to be together on that, I would imagine, to make yes, it work, yes, right? Yes. Gotcha. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Okay. So um, you and your husband, you, you go to the doctor, you do the work, you you know, you everything seems good for you to get pregnant. Did you get Pregnant on purpose, or did you go with the like, let's just see what happens method? Which one did you do? <laughs> sure. So uh, we did, goodness, I met with my endocrinologist uh, uh, last summer, um, met with a uh, maternal fetal medicine specialist who is the the same doctor who saw me in the hospital um, and had diagnosed me with HELP syndrome before. So I'd, I sought her out um, and went and saw her and just kind of got some uh, guidance and percentages, which is always nerve wracking to say, ah, oh, you've got a 30 or a 40 or a 50% chance of that coming back. Um, she had us meet with a reproductive endocrinologist as well, um, just to check on blood work to make sure we're not at risk for any, um, what do they call them? Fetal abnormalities, I okay. think. Um, and everything was looking good other than the risk of help syndrome returning was like a 30 to 40%, um, she said you could flip a coin and have it, or you could flip a coin and not. But because we were going into it with that awareness, um, we'd be monitoring, you know, blood pressure every day and probably doing a lot more, um, what is it? 24 hour urine catches and things like that to, oh, oh. <laughs> to just stay on top of everything. All those fun things. And, All and, the fun stuff, right? And you decided like it was, was it, I guess I want to know like when the decisions made, did it feel risky? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. It uh, Even just thinking about it, um, we're like, do we do this? Do we not? I don't know. We're um, we're uh, Christian, believe in God. So it was definitely giving it over to some prayer and just asking him to, if it's what he wanted for us, to let it happen. And if it's not, then don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jesus, I just want to have a short conversation with you here. I'm going to leave the do I get pregnant thing up to you. But one way or the other, if I'm doing the wrong thing, please don't kill me. <laughs> yes, yes, basically. It's a hell of a like, prayer. Hey, I don't want to die, but like shut it down if it's not what you want. <laughs> Somebody say something. Just a little wave of a hand. Hey, say that vase fell off the countertop right now. I would take that as a no. Just Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Like, like, I need something. Like, was that bunny running across the road? The no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Like, I'm I'm such a, like a horrible, not a horrible believer. That's a really bad thing to say. But I'm such a horrible like. I need a glaring, like obvious sign because everything random happens in my life. And I was like, was that God or was that just like cool? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you need like a guy in a beard holding a sign out front of your house. Just <laughs> yes says like can you please be in a jesus costume and tell me no don't have a baby (laughs) well since that didn't happen you got knocked up right (laughs) i did i did um we had we started trying last fall um and um everything was like going really well um my my body was working somewhat normally um pcos wasn't wasn't causing too many issues and um uh, we started trying in the fall and I thought I got pregnant. <laughs> this is a weird, I thought I got pregnant, but I never tested positive, um, in November. Um, so that was kind of strange. It was a weird, like, 
I had all the symptoms and, um, yeah, everything was just super wonky and my blood sugars were super low. And I just thought like, this is really strange, but I tested and I tested and I tested and I, um, had a late period and it was like two weeks late. And I was like, that's super strange, but I never had a positive test. So Jennifer, do you know how babies are made? Do you need me to tell you or you're okay? You (laughs) I I know actually I've I had a lot of practice. Okay, cuz boys have a <laughs> penis and girls have a vagina and then when they love each other, I can explain what happens next, but I mean you you get it. Yeah, I, I get it. I've had a, quite a few conversations with teens to help them. <laughs> no, sure I I understand. I understand what you mean. You, so it looked like you were pregnant and you just weren't. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, everything and everything was pointing that way and so I just thought it was a weird fluke or that my PCOS had had caused something to be off, whether it was a hormone surge or a lack of hormones or something like that. Um, so we went to the doctor, I went to the doctor actually in, um, uh, was it the end of November, beginning of December. And, um, she had ordered a couple of different, um, medicines for me to try, but I kept going back and forth again on that. Like, I don't know, God, is this you? Cause it's me. <laughs> do you want me to do this? Or like, do I not do this? Um, so I just kind of kept wavering back and forth on, on trying the medicine or not, um, different things. There was one that was going to be used off label and it's, it's like naltrexone, which is used for, um, people with addictions, um, and so I, I was very like kind of wigged out by it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want naltrexone in my system. I don't, I don't know about all this. Naltrexone? Uh, naltrexone, I think. That's interesting. Can re- it can help prevent relapses in alcohol or drug abuse. Yes. Yes. So if you take it super, super low dose, it can also help with, um, with inflammation, which, uh, she said would, would be, it, it would also calm down the PCOS, I guess. Hmm. Wow. Um, so I had to get it from like a pharmacy in Colorado and it was shipped to us. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be compounded into smaller like doses because I'm not taking it in the normal fashion, which is used to help with, did um, you, did you have to call the pharmacy by phone and disguise your voice? Were you like, hello, <laughs> right. this but is... you do have to pay over the phone and like call them. And that was so strange to me. Yeah. That's it. They couldn't do that in text. That's interesting. All right. I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. Uh, sure, sure. So anyway, you and the, you and the Mr. You're banging every which way and eventually, yay, pregnant, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that happened um, uh, the beginning of January. I found out that I was um, pregnant and that was super exciting. Mm-hmm. We didn't expect it. Um, we didn't anticipate it. We had actually like said, hey, let's just put it on hold because um, we found out my employer didn't have, um, oh, what do you call it? That leave, like um, temporary disability. Okay. So we had FMLA, but we didn't have temporary disability. So I set that all up through like an outside insurance agency, but we had to wait a month to, to try again. So we were like, okay, well, we'll just wait till February. You know, I'm thinking about all the effort you put into this. Some people just climb into the backseat of a car after a movie and it just, I know, you know, right. I know we've, I mean, we foster kiddos that are like, how these people just keep popping out the kiddos and (laughs) It's just, it's just not the same. You, you, well, listen, you had very good reasons to pay attention, uh, but you know, not here and there. So were you like getting your blood sugars like even better, like in the, like during this time, because you're, you know, a great A1C now, but they want you like under six for pregnancy, yes. right? Yes. And I've been, um, no higher than, than 6.4, um, for the past two or three years. Um, but most of, gosh, for, at that point I was like 5.6, 5.7 and today, or the most recent one I've had now was 5.7 as well. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Good for you. So I just kind of hang out there. I, I started looping, um, back in August and that really just made it a lot easier to hang out solo. Excellent. Um, yeah, the algorithm is just, uh, it's pretty darn helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot less to like, think about it and be able to, to breathe just a little bit more. And that's what gave me a lot more confidence to try to get pregnant. My endocrinologist was like, well, you would be my first pregnant looper. Um, 
So let's just make sure we're on the same page as we go into this because your MFM, he knew my MFM, my, the specialist, um, and then my um, CDE at the endocrinologist also is a looper. So wow. kind of have a, a great team on board now. That's excellent. Good for you. Uh, yeah. I guess I we should say this, this pregnancy did not end the way you were hoping. Um, Correct. How long were you pregnant? I, uh, so I found out, we think I found out earlier, um, than maybe I should have. Uh, I was only pregnant for, um, they think about seven to eight weeks now. Uh, it, uh, it kind of got a little sticky. I found out at the very beginning of January that I was pregnant. Um, and i lost the pregnancy, Ooh, um, middle of, middle of February, I think. Okay. Um, and it didn't go, I knew I was pregnant super, super early because my blood sugars just plummeted. Loop was doing loop and doing amazing, but I was taking zero insulin for like three days in a row. Okay. Um, and I was chugging juice boxes. Like I was tired of juice boxes because I was, I was in the fifties and sixties nonstop and loop had backed off of all of my insulin. You just said something. Hold on a second. That's really helpful. So once you were pregnant, I'm actually making a note. Sure. You needed less insulin by a lot. And there are yes. four days prior to Arden's period coming where she needs no insulin. I wonder what hormone, if there, if any, overlaps in those two scenarios. Sure. And I'm going to find out. Um, sure. Because that's... Uh, that's the first time that somebody said something that's made that click in my head. So I'm sorry. Uh, can yes. I ask you how were you pregnant when we met? I don't remember when I was in Dallas. Um, I f no. You know what? Um, no, because our um our kiddo had just joined our household, and we said yes to him a few weeks after um after, after losing our baby. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so was it? What, what what did they end up telling you had happened? So it was, it's a weird thing. And it's, again, <laughs> again, these are more medical <laughs> anomalies that only happen in me. Um, I had what they said, originally they said was an ectopic pregnancy, which means that the baby was growing in one of the tubes, the fallopian tubes, instead of growing in my uterus, right. um, which was terrifying. I, I woke up and I thought I was miscarrying one morning um, because just all of the graphic and gory, but there was a whole bunch of blood and I started sobbing. Um, and I went to the doctor that same day they got me in and, um, they did oh, like 45 minutes of sonograms, which is never a good sign. Mm. Um, and then she went and got the doctor, um, the, I guess this sonogram art artist, what are they called? Sonogram technician. <laughs> Um, are there some the people who do avant-garde sonograms and some people <laughs> who do more traditional? <laughs> Maybe artist was not the right word there. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's not, but <laughs> <laughs> it was like this is Frida Kahlo growing up there. <laughs> uh, it's um, it, by the way, there's a strong possibility this episode is going to be called avant-garde sonograms. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny, I guess more funny and also related is mine did look very strange and very um, unique. I've seen quite a bit of sonograms because um, with my uh, first son, I had basically a bajillion of them. I was yeah. getting them every week um, just to make sure everything was going well with him. So I had a different doctor and and they were very, very proactive on sonograms originally. And so this one definitely looked different. I knew what a fetal pole was supposed to look like in inside my uterus. And that was definitely not there. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were digging around and, and doing quite a bit of sonograms and she went and got the doctor and then they said, all right, get dressed and, and come into this other office. Yeah. So, um, the doctor originally said that it was a ectopic pregnancy. So it was growing in the wrong place. Um, but she said, because of the reason that I called in because I had been bleeding a lot. There was a hope that I would be losing the pregnancy so that we wouldn't have to terminate it itself. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really, really hard for me. That was something that I've always struggled with in my belief system. And those are things that were just a really, really difficult place for me to be, um, in learning that we might need to terminate, um, because it, it was growing in a place that would, 
uh, that would cause me to hemorrhage if it uh, ruptured. Yeah. Well, what ended up happening? Did did it sort of end naturally, or did you have to intervene? It did. So we had to do blood work um, every other day. They were monitoring the HCG to see if it was dropping or rising. Um, and it dropped significantly the first 48 hours, which was a good sign. Um, and then she said if it flattened again, because that can come some, sometimes cap- happen in ectopic miscarriages or ectopic pregnancies is your body doesn't know if it's pregnant or not. So it kind of gives you some hormones and then takes them away. Um, and so we waited um, because I would have to take a trigger shot to help um, to help dissolve it. Okay. Um, and we did, gosh, we did blood work on Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday. And we just kept doing sonograms, too, to see what was going on. And the next one, they weren't able to find a fetal pole um, and the blood flow that was going into where the the sac was. Um, they weren't able to find anything there. Um, there wasn't as much blood flow going inside, which was, they said was a good sign because it meant my body wasn't like feeding it. So it wouldn't continue to grow. Right. That's just an indication that it's, that it is going wrong and will end up ending on its own at some point. Gotcha. Yes. And it was in a really unique place. So it wasn't technically in the tube. It was in the opening of my uterus. Um, and the doctor had said, you know, like if it was one centimeter further into your uterus, like we would be completely fine. So that kind of sucked a lot. Mm. Um, because I had all of the full symptoms of pregnancy. I had the nausea was crazy. All of the stuff was happening. I was, we walked into a restaurant and I could smell the bleach that they were using in the bathroom. And I like was getting nauseous and had to run out of the restaurant, the restaurant. Oh my God. Um, I don't know what this, your poor Listen, women, I, I feel bad for you. I seriously do because so much stuff happens to you guys like day to day, week to week, month to month that is just terrible. My wife will walk in the door, you know, at 6 p.m. and she can't even get it. She's like, what is that? I'm like, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> There's an old apple in the bottom of the trash can eight <laughs> hours ago, but I took it outside. You can say, yeah, I smell it. I smell it. I smell it. I'm like, oh, Jesus, what the heck? <laughs> Turns into like a... Like a like a hound dog out of nowhere. She could just smell anything anywhere. Uh, yes. It's fascinating. It really is. I'm glad I'm not alone in that. My husband thinks it's so strange because I can, I can. I smell things from very far away. And I'm like, oh, what is that that you're making? Or if it smells delicious, I can smell it as I pull my car into the garage before I've even gone into the house. Yeah, tell him it gets more irritating after like 25 years. You're just like, <laughs> I know something smells somewhere. Let's go figure out what it is, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because she can't get off of it either, by the way, when it right. happens. She's just like, we have to do something about that. I'm like, about what? Okay, yeah, hold on. Yeah, once it's in your nose, it's it's there. <laughs> I'm serious. And then, you know, you find out a kid, like one of the kids threw a banana away upstairs. <laughs> and you're, yep. yeah, you're just like, all right, I, I found the banana peel. I'll take care of it. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. So well, yeah, that was, that that's... was it. I, we did, I did blood work every two days, um, for two and a half weeks, um, because my numbers kind of slowed down, but we were, I was apprehensive about doing any, um, any kind of, uh, shots or treatments. And then, I was also still having some horrible pains. And so there was this weird week where the pains were so severe that she said, if it's one point higher, you need to be in the hospital and we'll remove your ovaries and your uterus. Um, Which was terrifying too, because here we are wanting to try. And she's saying, if we do surgery, we will remove it all. Ew. Um, I'm glad that didn't happen. That's it, it, yeah, it was it was a super scary. Um, it ended up not having to have surgery um, because my body was was passing it somewhat naturally, um, and and my blood sugars. I knew I knew something had changed because my blood sugars went back to they, they went back up, hmm. um, and my you know loop was giving me normal amounts of insulin again, and that's when I knew that something had changed. Um, How long that, did it? How long did it take for your blood sugars to kind of regulate? It, it was until this had kind of run its course. Um, actually, the weekend, um, um, what was it like? ML? Mm, I don't know. There was a there was a weekend um, that my blood sugars just were back to normal, and I had to take insulin for food again. Um, and that was like a week later that I was like, "Oh, that's strange. I just had a bolus for food." Right. Um, because because 
I wasn't bolusing for food and I was staying low. Um, and you and got then I, to that. yeah, I went above like one thirty, and I was like, Oh, that's weird. Let me take some insulin. That's interesting. Oh my. Oh, so I'm sorry. All of this aside, cause we're, we're up to an hour now. Did, oh, yeah. does this change? I mean, are you going to try again? I don't know. Um, I'm still, I still go back and forth. I think my husband definitely wants to try again. Um, I go back and forth and like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And then other times, <laughs> well, other times <laughs> it's easy for him to say because an egg didn't get stuck in his fallopian tube. So <laughs> sure, sure, I'll sure. be like, sure. You mean more sex? I like that part. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other times I'm, I go back and forth on it. Um, I did start seeing a therapist again. Um, the week that we found out we were losing, um, our baby, we decided to name her or him because it, felt really weird to keep just saying like the baby or the sure. <laughs> the pregnancy or something. So um our son actually helped us and we didn't talk to him about what had happened. Um and that mommy's body um um uh, wasn't like a, a good place for the baby to grow in and it was really hurting mommy. And so um the baby actually passed away. So we talked about naming the baby and he wanted it to be named an A name because his name also starts with an A. Oh. Did he choose? Did you guys choose? You don't have to tell me if you don't want. To. Yes. No, we chose Avery. Um, tried to find a, a unisex name that could be both boy or girl, oh, um, depending on whatever the baby was. So. That is very nice. Um, yeah. I agree. I mean, not that you need my 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 agreeance or not, but I, <laughs> I agree with the therapy. That's a, it's such a great idea. Uh, yeah. You know, just to sort of get through, because you've been through a fair amount. How old are you now? I am 33 now. Yeah, you got to have stuff stop happening because I know. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> I know. I would like like I kind of like the n nice and boring life. Like I feel like I feel like it makes my blood sugars easier, it makes my life easier, and there's way less chaos. We bring in chaos through through foster care, but we try to like calm it all down and and have a nice and normal schedule. My son our, our son actually does really well on a schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, he's one of those kids that like craves structure. So that's been a, a, probably that was the biggest adjustment for me was being a parent. Like he's just a, he's really good in that structured life. So, well, I have to be honest, Jennifer, I don't know why so many lovely and decent people end up on this podcast because <laughs> it just, I mean, I'm, I don't know, like, I don't mean anything. I just, it, it, it astounds me when I'm talking to people and they're telling me their stories and you know just everybody is just wonderful you know yeah. people are it, it's it's just a very nice it's nice like i'm gonna have a good day now after talking to you so oh uh, seriously i, <laughs> well, I just I really wanted appreciate to like share what i don't know the other side of it i'm not that um not that i'm like oh diabetes is bad and it's gonna kill your babies because that's definitely not what i'm saying you don't think i should title the episode diabetes is bad and it's going to kill your baby <laughs> I mean, I would laugh at it, but I could see other people might be yeah, highly offended. It might make people <laughs> upset is what I'm saying. I, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to stick away from that one. I think what you're saying is that here's a thing that happened to you and it could, you know, it's, it's worth understanding that. Yeah. 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 I think all. blood sugars, watching my blood sugars, um, you know, I was doing all of the quote unquote right things as a diabetic. I was exercising three to five times a week and, um, uh, had a great A1C, had pretty good control. My standard deviation is low. My time and range is like 98% going into it. Yeah. Um, and that was with like a tightened range, not the normal 70 to 180. You know, I was doing all of the things and I was working my tail off. Um, and I don't blame myself for it. I know that crap happened, but I hope that at least just talking about it, other people can... I don't know if they're going through something crappy that they know they're not alone. Yeah, that's that's I mean important to understand. I have to say though, I isn't it possible that this all could have happened to you even if you didn't have type one? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I mean, your lady parts might just be busted up or something. They they are they are definitely busted up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I don't. Maybe it's the hair dye. Is that possible? <laughs> it is the pink and the purple from yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah, I'm saying, like, now. I don't know what happened, where it leaches <laughs> to. I don't understand science and thinking, so I don't know. What I know, I have a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of tattoos, too. I once had a doctor that said, like, oh, that that's really bad for you, basically poisoning your body. So maybe it's the tattoos. Well, you meet a lot of crappy doctors, don't you? <laughs> 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 just want to tell you bad stuff. 
Well, at least you didn't. I know. At least you didn't throw one of those like tattoo needles at you because they're heavy. They're like metal. <laughs> they're like heftier versions of needles. <laughs> Uh, you deserve a pass, Jennifer. I don't know if there are passes that we give out to people, but if there are, you get one. <laughs> I would love one. I would love just like that. I think that was my goal going into our pregnancy with Avery was just like to have a normal pregnancy. Sure. I, our, our, for, my first one was so chaotic and crazy. And, and I definitely felt like it kind of robbed me of that joy of, you know, everybody plans their birth plan and your holistic life with your newborn baby and all of these happy things. And mine, I woke up in ICU with platelets and blood being transfused in me. And I was like, what is this dark stuff in the IV bag? And they're like, Oh yeah, that's blood. Jeez. No. <laughs> so yeah. I just kind of wanted like a, a good healthy one. And I don't know. I don't know if that's, if that's just something I need to change in my wants or, or what, but I know, you know, diabetes wise, I went in it with the best control possible. Well, I guess the real question moving forward then is, is this something, if it goes badly again, you're up for? Do you know what I mean? Like, to me, it's not so much a question of do I want to have a baby of my own. The question is, can I physically and emotionally deal with this happening again if it happens? Sure. Because I, I come at everything from no. Like, I start with no, and then I work my way to yes. That's how I right, think right. through things. So if if you ask me if this had happened to me, I'd say I don't know if I want to go through, you know, another pregnancy that doesn't end uh, the, with a baby because, I, you know, and I don't know the rest of it. I don't know how it impacted you emotionally and, yeah, and, and yeah. That, that sort of stuff. To me, that's the way to think about it. But I don't know. Maybe you'll just wait for a guy in a sign in a Jesus costume to tell you. That. <laughs> uh, well, I talked about it with actually my therapist asked that question. Like, is that something that you want to do again? And I was like, I think I could do it one more time. <laughs> and she was like, really? And I was like. Yeah, like I I know my I don't know my emotional mm, strength, and I I am definitely one of those people that's like um, like if I say I'm going to do it, I'm I'm going to do it whether whether that means you know me getting wrecked in the process is a different story. Well, I think that you know you make a good point though. You're a person who's been through a lot, and it hasn't broken you. It stands the reason that one more bad thing is not going to like you don't feel like one more straw is going to break the camel's back, right? You're not living, no, no. teetering around. I think, yeah, I think I've en endured a lot. And maybe all of that, like, bad crap has just made me, a, like, an emotionally stronger person. I don't think I'm a, a tough, hard-ass kind of person. Right. Um, but I do think that I'm, I don't know, I can endure a lot. Um, so you 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 might be willing to risk what it is in totality to have a miscarriage to see if you can have a baby. Yeah, I think I could endure um maybe one maybe two more um before i just be done done now what would done look like would it just be like you going bleh, 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 bleh. like do you think you'd just like like spring a leak or do you think it would just be like <laughs> like is, is your husband gonna have to put you out in the backyard to pasture be like where's jennifer oh <laughs> she doesn't live in the house now. anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, um you know you know i think that he um he's probably would be more um more distraught and more upset by it um I think there will always be that part of me that wants that, like that happy ending kind of thing. But yeah, of if course. that's just not part of my story, then trying to find the best, I don't know, just like everything else that's happened in my life, trying to find the best outcome out of all of the bad. No, I mean, listen, some people's paths are just, Arden said to me the other night, she goes, can like, wouldn't it be cool if we were like a family where like, we just like a normal thing wrong. Like just like one of us had asthma or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, that'd be more, that would definitely be better, I would tell you, <laughs> you know? I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know, bad stuff happens to good people. I'm not saying I'm good people, but I, I think that if I can just try to find a way to use my story to um, to help somebody else, then, then that's what I'm going to do. Jennifer, I'm going to leave you with this, and I mean this incredibly sincerely. Do you really not know you're a good person? <laughs> Um, that was the saddest thing anyone's ever said on here. And I, you were just, <laughs> you were hedging your bet. Are you afraid Jesus will hear you say you're a good person? What, what, no. Why did you just say that? Tell me, please. Um, you know, I just, uh, I mean, I think we all make mistakes and we all do crazy things. I just, I just try to be the best version of me um, that I possibly can be. And I want to like, when I do die, and I, I know this has been a, like a whole bunch of death talk, <laughs> but I, when I do die, I want I want people to be like, man, she lived like a full 
filled with love life. And that's, that's just what I try to do. Yeah. I just don't know why you would, would qualify. I'm not saying I'm, have you ever like shanked a bitch over cigarettes or something like that? Or (laughs) I mean, I did say I lived like a crazy teenage. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. I (laughs) definitely did not shank anybody. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Well, listen, I'm, I'm no one to you, but let me just tell you that from my perspective, Jennifer, you are a good person. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, work on that in therapy and not laughing <laughs> when somebody says something nice about you, okay? Because it took me a while to not have to giggle through somebody saying nice things about me, too. And I, I grew up like a feral cat uh, as well. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine us like running through like a forest or like a, a prairie scene. We're just like brawling and then running some more. Yeah, my feral wasn't as much like out in the open. Like it was just like an emotional I was like an emotional feral cat. Like nobody ever checked on me. Do you know what I mean? They oh, were never okay, like, yeah. hey, you're all right, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I made good grades. So like did, people didn't care. <laughs> oh, you're really good student. They left you alone. Yes. I'm again, that devoted to like, I, I want to be the best. So um, uh, I made, I don't know, A's and, and everything. I just made a B again, like in grad school. And I was really, really mad at myself <laughs> oh my <laughs> for God. making a B. Well, my wife was getting her, um, her advanced degree, she got like a 97 in a class and she argued with that professor for months by email. <laughs> I was like, Kelly, <laughs> why does this matter? She's like, because yeah, mine was an 89.4. It hurts so bad. Yeah. I was like, there's something incredibly wrong with you. Just so you know, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. Tell her I, I totally get it. Oh I, no, I, I, I don't think she's alone. I'm just telling you all y'all are messed up. If that's a, if that's a worry for you, you know, we just want to be the best Scott. Like we yeah. want to be the best diabetics and the best pregnant person and the best mom and the best everything. I don't and have that probably- feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm in therapy. So <laughs> I've never felt like that in my life. Like, you know what? If I don't beat all of these people, it's going to be a real letdown. I've just, <laughs> I'm just always like, hey, I'm doing all right. Good enough. And mine's, mine's not really so much a comparison to other people. Like, eh, I don't care if you go kill people. Oh, well, it's I mean, for I, yourself. You, you know, it's just me. Yeah. Like, I want to be the best for me. Oh, no, no. I, I see that my son is competitive against himself, too. He really is. I've said it here before, but I don't know if it means as much to him to win a baseball game as it does for him to play well in that baseball game. Yep. Yep. I can't tell sometimes, you know, he, he really is in a competition with himself. So I'm sure he'll grow up to be a, um, a lunatic just like the rest of you guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're really delightful. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. I'd also like to thank the Contour Next One blood glucose meter and remind you that you can get it at contournext.com forward slash juice box. And don't forget, to check out the T1D Exchange at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Hey, now that you're done listening, you should go check out the Facebook page for the podcast, Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. It's a private Facebook page with over 7,000 participants, everyone talking about type 1 management and other ideas. It's an equal mix of parents and adults. And I think you'll like it. It's about the nicest place I've ever seen on Facebook. And that is saying something. If you're looking for a great doctor or have one that you'd like to suggest to others, please check out juiceboxdocs.com. And if you're looking for those diabetes pro tip episodes and you're having trouble finding them there in your podcast player, they're all listed at diabetesprotip.com. Check it out. Lastly, I'd love to thank you for sharing the show with other people. October was just the most popular month in the history of the show, beating September that was the previous most popular month of the show, which, of course, beat the month before that, which beat the month before that, which what I'm trying to tell you is the show becomes more and more popular every month, and that's because you're sharing it, and I really appreciate it. All right, thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.